trustees. Thank you. As you can see, she's at, she's at a hotel in Hopi, so we're trying to reach her there. Hello. Hi, Miriam, are you with us? I'm here, Carrie. I've been trying to get through. I guess so. I'm not sure, you know, the logistics here, but at least we have you, so that's wonderful. Thank you. So, I'm sorry? I said I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Carrie. Go ahead. Lovely. Okay. Well, I just want to say Miriam Delicato is a Camelot witness, and we have several interviews with her as well as conference presentations that she's given, one that was at our fall conference, Awake and Aware, in L.A., and she's a wonderful speaker, and she is a contactee. She's been in touch with the, well, I guess you might call them the tall blondes since 1988, and she has quite a story in regard to that. Her website is bluestarprophecy.com, and she also has a book that she's written. So I suggest you go to her website and take a look at her and what's available there. And Miriam, why don't you just kind of give yourself an introduction here, because I've just given you something very sort of superficial, but why don't you talk a little bit about your book and a tiny bit about your background, just for the people that might be new to this, because we are also going over Europe and all over the world, and there will be people listening, hopefully, that have never heard of you. And so we can make new ground. Yes, sort of to wrap a very complex story into a nutshell. In 1988, I had a very spiritual encounter, a physical encounter, with tall, blonde extraterrestrials on a highway in British Columbia, Canada. And uh, I talk about um, in the, I talk about this particular experience um, in my book Blue Star. And during this event in 1988, these beings um, sort of gave to me a great deal of knowledge regarding uh, our future as uh, a species, as human beings living on the planet Earth. Um, and they talked to me quite a bit about uh, the interrelationship between. Um, them and this world in the sense that uh, they had a hand in creating us as human beings um, and that uh, the indigenous people of the earth are very, very connected to these, you know, star beings, if you want to call them that, um, and how that interconnectedness is sort of working through our society today. And in my book, uh, I share sort of the, the journey that I was on to from my birth all the way up until I think it was 2005 and how uh, different experiences that I had in context that I had with them and the difficulties um, that I had in accepting the, fully accepting the responsibility that, I, that they gave to me um, in giving me this knowledge and sharing this knowledge with me. And many people around the world, of course, have had similar experiences. And I know that my story has touched a lot of people uh, who have had contact in many different forms, whether it's spiritually through meditation or maybe they've had sightings uh, and not necessarily physical encounters. But I tried to convey the the delicacy and the struggle that we all um, go through in these experiences and to recognize that it is uh, uh, something that is not easily accepted, but it is the truth. And, um, and at this point on my website, the Blue Star Fulfilling Prof, the Blue Star, um, dot com at bluestar.com, I try to share a little bit here and there with as much as I can for my time um, some of the insights and knowledge that comes to me from these beings and the current path that we're on as, as uh, a whole, as, as the human race. Because, of course, they, this is not necessarily in the book, but uh, currently the time that we're in in respect to uh, you know, a, a time of choice, I call it, and a time of change, um, this t- this particular point in our history is something that they talked to me about a great deal. And so 
my focus for what I've been sharing with people has moved from talking about the details of my, you know, face-to-face -face encounter with these beings more towards what it is that they have asked us as, as a species to be doing, which is moving towards unity and towards um, creating a voice to be able to, you know, make the changes that need to be made in our society and in our world because, uh, you know, we're never going to get there doing it on our own. We're really going to need to support one another um, through all of these different facets, you know, these radio programs, blogs, emails, uh, groups, organizations, all of it, and really coming together and creating a movement in order to facilitate that change and create more respect for one another and respect for the earth. So it kind of is twofold, um, you know, two areas that, uh, that I talk about. One is really the, the physical context that I've had and then, of course, the messages that I've had. But the book is uh, a compilation of, of events in my life that sort of led me to this path that I'm on. And, and uh, that book is available on, on my website at bluestarprophecy.com. Okay, and also, Miriam, you're still in contact with, with the tall, white, um, tall beings. <laughs> yeah. and Okay, so because that's that's actually something that I think people would be very interested to know, that, you know, you get messages actually at any time of the day or night. They could suddenly uh, contact you. Yes. Um, you know, my physical contacts, meaning, you know, as if you and I are going to go for a coffee, Carrie, and sit in a restaurant and have a cup of tea or something, that kind of a contact I have not had for many years. The last time, in fact, was not um, was was as far back as 2005, and it was on Hopi, um, in the Hopi Reservation in Arizona, uh, in the United States, and that was the last time that I had a physical face-to-face -face encounter with one of these beings. And since then, I've had many. Uh, I guess astral encounters where. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm basically pulled out of my body and go and meet with them in that, in that form. I also have them come to me in dreams uh, where they stand in front of me and give me messages. And the other way is that I, I all of a sudden will sense them and then a message will come and then I'll get a physical sign around me that says that they're there, like, for example, a flash in the sky or uh, maybe I'll see an orb. Um, what, what I call a star orb, one of these physical um, beams of light that basically look like a star in the middle of the day floating through the sky. So uh, this is, these are some of the different ways that they contact me. And these, these contacts are still happening to me even today. After 23 years, they still happen to me physically. And when they speak to me, um, they will sometimes give me messages about what path to follow and what information I need to, to, to look at and, and people I might need to contact. And it's not, uh, it's not as detailed as what someone might imagine, but it's as if, you know, Carrie, you would pick up the phone and say, listen, this person over here named, you know, George, you need to pay attention to what he's saying and follow his his lead. And that's the kind of messages that I might get. And then what, what happens as a result of those messages from the tall blondes is I end up being led down some absolutely fascinating paths that are all interrelated to indigenous people, um, sacred uh, and the sacredness of, of, of what they carry. And it also leads me to other contactees and even abductees who have had experiences that hold, um, hold knowledge that was given to them. Or it leads me to individuals, um, for example, more recently, uh, it's leading me to individuals who are extremely connected to the earth and are feeling earth changes. So these messages come for many different reasons, small and large, and it is often 
I find it often difficult.